Hello friends of the sun and welcome to another reading of philosophy. Today we are reading about the Stoics and you very well know what Stoic means that you are basically indifferent to anything that happens in your life and that by that way you achieve high mastership over your life and the stoic philosophy became recently very popular among people in silicon valley and america in general because it has this promise of becoming a superior being and so therefore i think we should look closer into stoic philosophy what it is and I just looked it up on Wikipedia. Uh, I think it gives us some good hints what Stoic philosophy is about. So let's have a very brief look. It's a school of Hellenistic philosophy. So it comes from the time after Alexander had died. It's like in the third century after Christ and the first, actually, I'm not entirely sure if it was after Alexander died. I believe so, but I'm not entirely sure. But around Alexander's time. So the first Stoic was actually Zeno of Sitium. And actually, I don't want to talk so much about him because these early Stoics, they also had a certain kind of ontology and epistemology, but we don't know so much about it. We know more about Epictetus and Marcus Aurelius. Uh, this picture that I showed you at the beginning is actually a picture of Marcus Aurelius. And he was probably the most influential philosopher who ever lived in terms of its worldly power because he was the emperor of Rome. Certainly the he was the most influential philosopher who walked the earth maybe not in terms of his teachings but in terms of his concrete power he possessed and well we know a lot about him because he wrote these letters to himself and these letters are mostly ethical and i think this is also the core of what we take uh, stoic philosophy to be nowadays as it says here on wikipedia uh, virtue is the central concept and it's necessary and sufficient to achieve eudaimonia um, that means a good life and we see again that of course wealth does not belong so much to a good life it's a virtue that defeats them all right uh, virtue is the only good for human beings and that external things such as health wealth and pleasure are not good or bad in themselves but have value as material for virtue to act upon So, yeah, I mean, wealth is not bad at like necessarily. So, I mean, there are some more precise meanings of Stoic philosophy. So I think it is not completely rejecting any kind of wealth, but it says it's also not really helping you uh, to become happy. So the Stoics also held that certain destructive emotions resulted from errors of judgment and they believed people should aim to maintain a will that is in accordance with nature. Because of this, the Stoics thought the best indication of an individual's philosophy was not what a person said, but how a person behaved. And I also looked in uh, the Stanford article. Let's open that very briefly. It's a bit, um, cannot be clearly seen here. And of course, the Stanford article is a little bit more academic, right? Um, but it also says that these philosophy philosophies have been deeply practical. I just let me let me search for one second the passage. Ah, there it is already, right? Uh, so they define philosophy as a kind of practice or exercise, as cases. Uh, in the expertise concerning what is beneficial, once we come to know what we and the world around us are like, and especially the nature of value, we will be utterly transformed. This therapeutic aspect is common 
to their main competitors, the Epicureans, and perhaps helps to explain why both were eventually eclipsed by Christianity. The meditations of Marcus Aurelius, that's the um, emperor that I mentioned, right, provide a fascinating picture of a would-be Stoic sage at work on himself. The book, also called To Himself, is the Emperor's Diary. In it, he not only reminds himself of the content of important Stoic teachings, but also reproaches himself when he realizes that he has failed to incorporate these teachings into his life in some particular instance. Today, many people still turn to Stoicism as a form of, psych form of psychological discipline. Now, probably if we want to understand Stoic philosophy best, there is a quote of Epictetus helping us very much. Remember that you must behave as at a banquet. Is anything brought round to you? Put out your hand and take a moderate chair. Does it pass you? Do not stop it. Is it not come yet? Do not yearn and desire towards it, but wait till it reaches you. So with regard to children, wife, office, riches, and you will some time or other be worthy of feast with gods. And if you do not do so much as take the things which are set before you, but are able even to forego them, then you will not only be worthy to feast with the gods, but to rule with them also. For by thus doing, uh, Diogenes and Heraclitus and others like them deservedly became divine and were so recognized. So what does that mean? Okay, when you are at a banquet, right, focus on what you can change, but what you cannot change, don't be bothered by it. We hear that very often in Silicon Valley. So when you can get the food, then yeah, take it, take it. But if you can't, then don't mind. You're strong, you're so strong. But if you really want to be strong, then you don't even desire the food when it comes close to you and you could take it. And by that, you would become a god. Uh, well, yeah, that's probably the best way to summarize how these Stoic philosophers believe our life should work. So, and we have some more quotes here, right? Philosophy does not promise to secure anything external for man, otherwise it would be admitting something that lies beyond its proper subject matter. For as the material of the carpenter's word and that of statuary bronze. So the subject matter of the art of living is each person's own life. Yeah, again, we see here how it is a deeply practical philosophy and how it does not focus on anything that is material outside, but how it actually focuses on the thing that can be changed and that is one's personal life. Yeah, I'd say there is not much more to talk about the Stoics. I mean, their ethical principle is very easily to be seen and to be understood. But the question is, is it really an advisable philosophy of our time? And that is a reasonable question because many people follow that. And it's interesting that especially people in Silicon Valley follow it. And we should consider two things. So the main proponents of the Stoic philosophy have been a slave, Epictetus. He was born into slavery and an emperor. And somehow the emperor had it quite easier than the slave. But think about a slave who accepts the status quo. He says, well, these are the masters. I cannot change it. But if I accept it, I will be a master, right? Like a kind of role reversal where you really wonder is it a philosophy of the weak? Is it a philosophy, a practical philosophy that works like a drug and that says, uh -uh -uh, don't try to change it, you can't. Just be happy the way you are. And I think it fits very well with a dictatorial system or like an imperial system as Rome has been back then. And I wonder, therefore, should that be really the philosophy of our time? Uh, should this kind of attitude towards things, this kind of non-emotional behavior, really also guide our personal interactions? So, for example, if somebody <laughs> uh, separates from us, 
like let's say a girlfriend or a wife, should we just say, I let it go, I let it go, look how I let it go, I'm so strong. Or is it actually denying something that is fundamental about our existence, namely that we are invested in things? Maybe. But what I also find interesting when Marcus Aurelius says, God, I believe he says that, give me the power to distinguish what I can change so that I can change it and also to know what I cannot change so that I don't interfere with it. But I think in a practical approach, you cannot know beforehand, before you engage into practice, what can be changed and what cannot be changed. I'm not speaking out against theory in general, but theory and practice have to go hand in hand. And the idea that the world is an independent entity from us that does not interfere with our practices is that's a strong presupposition of the Stoic philosophy. And I advocate more for a philosophy of careful attempts. You need to look in your life what you can change by trying a little bit. By, yeah, I mean, <laughs> let's phrase it in another popular way to push a little bit your comfort zone. Anyway, that's what I wanted to say about the Stoics. If you think that was useful, then leave me a comment or a like. Otherwise, live long, be more of a Stoic. It's not that bad. And then prosper.